Hello friends, welcome all for yet another interactive session from Tunga Hospital. Today we have with us Dr. Praveen Kamar. Sir is an MCH in Surgical Oncology from Tata Memorial Cancer Institute. Fellowship in Colorectal Surgery and Minimal SS GI Surgery from Tata Memorial as well as Yonsei Cancer Institute, Korea. Today's topic is Rectal Cancer is Stoma Bag Necessary? Uh, so we will begin with few interactive questions with sir. To begin with sir, the first question is, let us know what is rectum. So, <clears throat> before going into the details of the treatment and the, what kind of uh, 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 rectal cancers or the treatments require stoma bag, it is very important that we know what is rectum. So, as we know the digestive system uh, starts from your mouth, the food goes into your food pipe when you eat and swallow. Then it reaches stomach, from there it goes to intestine, that is the small intestine, then the large intestine and finally it reaches rectum before ex be being expelled mm -hmm. as stools. So rectum is the last part of digestive system which is just above the anal canal. This is a tubular structure just like all other uh, intestinal segments and it measures around uh, 12 to 15 centimeters. It may be little, uh, it may have little variable distances based on uh, the patient's characteristics. But usually it is around 12 to 15 centimeters. And uh, it has three portions. One is the upper portion, one is the mid portion, one is the lower portion. So it is the lower portion which is connecting the upper portion to the anal canal. So that's what the rectum is. Okay, thank you, sir. The next question which will come is, uh, what are the symptoms of uh, rectal cancer? Yeah. So I think it is a very important question uh, before going into the further details. So in India, so what we are observing is the rectal cancer is being seen more and more in younger patients. Okay. If you compare to Western population, where uh, the colonic cancers and rectal cancers usually appear on fifth or sixth decade of patient's life. Here it is almost 10 to 15 years younger. So even patients in their 40s and patients in their 50s, early 50s are also being diagnosed re with rectal cancer more frequently. So what are the symptoms of rectal cancer? So one of the most commonest symptom of rectal cancer is bleeding uh, when the patient passes stools. When the bowel movement happens, there is bleeding along with it. And there may be some change in frequency. So if somebody is going, uh, passing the bo mo bowel movement uh, is happening only once in a day, so he may start having three or four times uh, in the day or it may become, he may become constipated. So like instead of once in a day, it becomes like once in two days or three days. And even the stool consistency also may change okay. from normal stools, so it, came, it may become hard stools or it may become loose stools or there may be an alternating also. So this is what we collectively call uh, call as uh, so the ch change in the bowel movements. So that uh, these are, this is the second symptom, and when it is in uh, little advanced stage, uh, the the growth may completely block the passage of stools, where the patient may have abdominal distension, discomfort, gurgling sounds in the abdomen, and uh, in severe cases he may have vomiting also. And uh, when the disease is uh, too far spread in uh, other parts of the body, the patient may have generalized weakness, loss of weight, loss of appetite, etc. So out of them, the most important thing is bleeding that happens while passing stools or without it. So most of the times we end up attributing that to uh, hemorrhoids, uh, what we call as piles mm. or fissures. And uh, that is one of the most common uh, reasons why these symptoms are neglected, thinking that uh, either this is piles or fissures and it can be treated easily. So that's how we miss most of the rectal cancers. True, very true. We do consider that at piles and all that. So that's the reason we miss out onto that. So the next question which comes to my mind is, why the fear of stoma bag is so prevalent in respect to the rectal cancer? So, uh, so what has happened is, uh, so whenever there is uh, surgical advances happening or technological advances in field of medicine happens, the, the time that it takes for uh, that knowledge and uh, the information to reach general public is uh, pretty long. So the fear of uh, stoma, uh, having a stoma bag for rectal cancer treatment is uh, based on uh, the older surgical practice where 
if there was rectal cancer the treatment of choice is surgery where the entire rectum is removed and there is uh, no anal opening left so invariably the patient used to have a permanent stoma bag okay so now it is not so but that information is not actually available to the patient so they are still uh, loaded with older information and uh, based on the older surgical practices so that's why and uh, so that that is how the patient gets the impression that rectal cancer hai to stoma bag lagne wala hai so that is first thing and the the second thing is they don't have the uh, the further information about the surgical advances etc uh, and uh, and third thing is there is lot of social stigma attached to these stoma uh, issues because uh, the stool coming from your abdominal wall and it may stink it may smell so there is a leakage of bag it may become socially awkward and embarrassing to the patient so a lot of social stigma is also associated and that in turn adds to the fear about uh, uh, having a stoma bag okay so other question add on to this is stoma bag always necessary and if so how do we decide uh, that when the stoma bag is necessary okay so uh, as we dis- uh, when i was discussing about what rectum is so rectum is a Uh, tube of around 12 to 15 cm long it is again divided into uh, the upper part the middle part and the lower part the lower part is the one which is closest to uh, the anal opening right and uh, imagine uh, so, so what happens the rectum is a storage unit so where the undigested food is stored as fecal matter okay and uh, in the terminal part where the rectum joins the anal canal is where the sphincter is there uh, which controls the bowel movement so imagine when you are in a socially awkward situation when you are in a function or when you are outside and there is an urge to clear your bowel so you squeeze your buttocks you you tighten your sphincters and control it so so that is the last portion of rectum and anal canal which are squeezing and contracting so this is very important to have a continent Uh, rectal function meaning where you can control the motility of the bowel only when this function is affected by the tumor and where this section of the lower rectum needs to be removed only then the patient requires a permanent stoma okay the upper rectum the one is uppermost part of rectum in all uh, almost all cases they never require a stoma the middle portion of rectum they may or may not require a temporary stoma the permanent sto- the issue of permanent stoma comes only with the lower rectal lower cancers rectum. okay so now we know that the upper and the mid rectum uh, do not require stoma uh, most of the times or may not require stoma for the lo- lower rectum tumors uh, is stoma always necessary so again uh, so let us get back to what we discussed earlier so there is a sphincter which actually controls your uh, which helps you control your bowel movements when you want to control your gas when you want to control your bowel motility so you squeeze your buttocks as i said so in the last terminal portion is the sphincter in the anal canal so it consists of two parts one is the one which you control when socially awkward when you squeeze your buttocks to tighten your sphincter so that is your voluntary muscle and there is another muscle which is in the rectum itself which does not listen to us so where all its function is completely involuntary okay so when in the even in a low rectal tumor when the outside sphincter which is under your control which you can squeeze if it is not involved it is possible to avoid stoma even in low rectal cancers okay to so again uh, what are the advances in our uh, knowledge or surgical expertise help us to prevent the stoma yeah. so uh, in earlier days uh, there was hardly any facility for ct scan or mri or any other sort of imaging now we have excellent uh, imaging modalities and uh, mri of the rectum is one of the most important uh, modalities that uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that is a mandatory thing to evaluate a rectal cancer so it helps us identify the sphincter complex the, the the last terminal portion of the rectum and how much involvement is there so that are the first thing 
uh, it, it is the technological advance which helps us map the disease properly uh, and uh, decide whether even in a low rectal cancer whether a permanent stoma is required or not required so that is the first thing and uh, the second thing is we have lot of uh, pre surgery treatments okay, like radiation and chemotherapy so what they do is they help us downsize the tumor shrink the tumor before surgery so that we can somehow save the sphincter and avoid a permanent stoma and the third thing is most important is the surgical advances mm -hmm. so there are surgical procedures what we call as ultra low anterior resection and intersphincter resections so these are uh, technologically advanced surgical procedures for uh, low rectal cancers where we uh, we preserve the external sphincter the one which is under your control and part or whole of your know, the involuntary sphincter so so combined uh, combining all three that uh, is a mri along with your uh, uh, pre surgery treatment and advanced surgical techniques will help us in preventing a permanent stroma so having said that most of the cancers of a uh, low rectum and some of mid rectum they require a temporary stoma which is reversible so why do we require a temporary stoma is rectum is a, a tubular structure whose blood supply is not very robust so when we cut and join the rectum uh, the healing may be problematic so the if the healing is problematic and wherever we have joined if there are any issues in the healing then the patient may land up with other complications to avoid that the patient may have to get a temporary stoma which can be reversed uh, after the surgery okay uh, friends uh, such a wonderful uh, in a session by dr pravin kumar i am very sure that the things which are there in your mind about the stoma Uh, the rectal cancer and stoma bags uh, when it is necessary when we need to uh, put the stoma bags is very clear now uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us and do join us for the future live sessions and uh, future interactive sessions from tunga hospital thank you